This episode of Nintendo Pod Block is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our Fennial podcast, head over to patreon.com slash bossrushmedia or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Welcome to Nintendo Power Black here on Boss Rush Games. I'm your host, the Elite Excited ADV. I have no Corey Deary, no boss man with me this week, but I got two surprising guests that I truly love. It's they're, they're like my bro hands. You guys already know the first one. He's the host of Crossroads. He is like the Star Trek philosopher professional who knows everything yeah from boss rush podcast the gunner hunter himself and after dark the pc must have raised itself mr leron doggins hello good sir hey y'all what's popping how's it going what? how's it going it what is popping good sir yeah i mean i mean those those two puppies in my background are popping for sure <laughs> <laughs> You hear this? I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to keep the mic on mute when I'm not speaking. <laughs> and everybody, you already know. If you need in need of a single player game, you have to go to the professional. You gotta go to the best, the one, the only, Sebastian Marden. Hello, good sir of the single player podcast. What is up, good sir? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the single player experience is now in the building. Sebastian is officially here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for basking in my glory upon this good day. Thank you for having me on this esteemed show. Gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? Well, I feel like I feel like it's a privilege for me to be on this show with you. Like, well, wow, <laughs> that, that was that was an opener. Jeez. <laughs> Ah, even, she, even she agreed. Even she agreed with that. <laughs> I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. But yeah, it's it's you know, it was one of those things where Ed sent up the back signal last minute and he was just like, Man, I need I, w- I want you to be on the show today. And I was just like, I had a day at work and my energy is like all the way up to ten thousand. So I'm I'm bringing the heat today, boys. Be prepared. Mm. Be, be prepared. I'm bringing that heat. That's what that's what I'm talking about. Yes, I literally had just got off and my computer ran out of power. And I'm like, what the world have not left with 100% <laughs> power plugged in? And I guess we must have lost power or whatever. I'm like, are you serious? So, um, ran that ran that battery out. Yeah, I just don't know. I, it, it was fully charged when I left for work. When I came back, it was like at negative 12. I mean, not negative 12. It was like at 12%. I'm like, <laughs> what the heck is this nonsense? Oh, goodness. I've just been having a week of nonsense for the last two weeks. Uh, the c- customer's been arguing at me, so i kind of been... I can't, I've i been ignoring them. While I'm talking to other customers and they trying to get somewhere and be mad about stuff, I've been talking to my other associates trying to find a deal, and they've been walking away. I can't believe this. I'm going to call. Go ahead and call. I'm trying to figure out what's, what's going on and everything. Mm-hmm. And you know, my my Aries was almost about to come out. And when my Aries come out, the true blackness come out and everything. <laughs> and I I try to be suburban. I try to be suburban. But sometimes I'm going to get hooked. And my store, all the associates know, if I'm yelling and I'm kicking the customer out and all of them run, they be like, oh, you must have got Eddie to a higher level of being upset. They're just like, you might as well just get in your car and not come to the store ever again. Oh, man. They were, so, they were in you hot then. Oh, that, when I get hot, when I get that hot, I'd be like, I'm about to go sit down. Someone give me some ice cream or something, a snack. I'm about to be like, uh-uh. Man, that sounds then, like pure shenanigans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Over, and it's just been shenanigans over stupid stuff. Just like, uh, 
But when I get to talking about video games and kicking with you guys and talk to the, my boss for screw and community, I feel a lot better. There. Yeah, okay. It's your zen place. As you should. Yes. As you should. Yes. Um, everybody, we have a mini black episode. Um, I promise you guys we will be back, be back to talking about Snack Tendo and uh, playing with power and things like that. But we just got some like insane news. Um, finally, we got a decision about the Microsoft and Activision uh, deal versus the FTC. Um, and there was a news story that came out of all of this. And I was kind of surprised. Um, Call of Duty on Switch still isn't guaranteed as FTC appeals court ruling. Um, and this story is going to come from Nintendo Live. And it says, if you thought that the conflict surrounding Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard was all over, think again. Earlier this week, a California judge ruled in favor of Microsoft and denied the Federal Trade Commission's request for a preliminary injunction against the deal. The FTC has now filed an appeal against that decision. The news was shared by the Virgin Senior Editor, Tom Warren, who you guys definitely should check out. Um, who noted that the regulator, uh, the regulator's argument behind the appeal has not been shared yet and will likely remain that way until it's submitted to the North Circuit Courts of Appeals, which may then be able to issue an emergency stay to extend the existing temporary restraining order currently set to expire on July 14. Uh, Microsoft President Brad Smith took to Twitter to issue a statement on the appeal, knowing the company's disappointment that the FTC is continuing to pursue what has become a demonstrable weak cause. Uh, of course, there is no guarantee that the appeal will be passed before the deal deadline of the eight, uh, July 18th, meaning that Microsoft may still be able to complete the acquisition in the early part of the next week. Um... NASDAQ announced that Activision Blizzard will be removed from the NASDAQ 100 ESG index before market opening on July 17, signaling that the company would cease to be its own entity. It seems that Microsoft's preparations are well underway. And like today, um, Turkey, they just, they was like, okay, that's it. That's, they, they can have the deal <laughs> and move right on on. And I was just mm. like, oh, wow. Um, but, uh, the court filed a 53 page document earlier today in which judge Corley cited with all claims made by Microsoft, including an agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to switch. Part of this conclusion can be found, um, in one of their statements, um, uh, that, uh, she has wrote. Um, and she says, Microsoft's acquisition of Activision has been described as the largest in tech history. It deserves scrutiny. That scrutiny has paid off. Microsoft has committed in writing, in public, and in court to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation for 10 years on parity with Xbox. It made an agreement with Nintendo to bring Call of Duty to Switch, and it entered several agreements to, for the first time, uh, bring Activision's content to several cloud gaming services. This court's responsibility in this case is narrow. It is to decide if, notwithstanding these current circumstances, the merger should be halted, perhaps even terminated, pending resolution of the FTC administrative action. For the reason explained, the court finds the FTC has not shown a likelihood it will prevail on this claim that particularly vertical merger in the specific industry may substantially lessen competition. To the contrary, the record evidence points to more consumer assets to Call of Duty and other Activision content. The motion for a preliminary injunction is therefore denied. Hmm. So, um, what did you guys think of all of this? Um, just like, are you happy that most of this is almost about to be over? Or was this court battle very juicy? Like the drama, like it was definitely juicy. Mm -hmm. It was def it was definitely juicy. Um, I, I, you know, the stuff like this happens, and like it definitely gives us a peek behind the curtain about what goes on in the industry and stuff like that. Because like mm -hmm. we knew, we knew, like you know, like Sony turns out like like mega blockbuster games as far as like their budget and stuff. But finding out that you know, like we're looking at two hundred million dollar budget, you know, to produce like games like The Last of Us, as well as um as well as Horizon Zero Dawn and stuff like that. That was that was an eye opener right there and stuff like that. You know, um, 
also you know just the whole just uh, there was so much shenanigans like uh like it was like it was easy to like just pay attention to see what was going on here like you know like some of the people on the FTC, they definitely sound like they were they did not have a clue about the industry and stuff like that. Like there was even at one point where uh, where where uh, where someone didn't know who the hell Sat, uh, Satya Nadella was. You know, I was like, come on, guys, like do your homework. Like that's the, like you guys are you guys are doing an injunction against Microsoft. You know, particularly Xbox and and Microsoft is own uh, Microsoft owns Xbox, so you don't know who the hell CEO of is of the company. Like that's a name that you know, like you shouldn't even have to have have dropped, you know, it's like that. So it was pure comedy, but also like it was very enlightening to see all, all the stuff that came out behind it because, like you know, this is the stuff that honestly, this is stuff. This is transparency that gamers want all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Imagine. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. This is it, there was a lot of good juicy bits in there, like um the cost of what what Sony was um um like paying to actually put out these games and then like you know some of the behind the scenes stuff about like um what company was trying to buy another company uh, back in the past i'm like well we knew microsoft was trying to grab everything Mm -hmm. but wow just just to see to see it actually unfold before our eyes was hilarious like like you know like microsoft has been wanting that that presence you know in um that has been one that presence in Japan for a long time. So to see them making attempts at the uh, Sega, you know, um, and some, and some Bungie other, some, and, but yeah, well, I, I was blown away when it was revealed that, that Bungie was considered a high risk investment for both Microsoft and Sony. Mm-hmm. I was blown away because like the way, the way people talk about destiny and like, and like IPs around destiny and stuff like that, you would figure mm-hmm. that, you know, like this is a hot commodity and stuff like that. So, why would it be so much of a loss you know uh but yeah you know but i don't play destiny like that so like i really don't know like the inner workings and stuff like that you know like i i just love how like the community for destiny you know like they have this ebb and flow of like oh we love it we hate it we we're not interested we love it we hate it we're not interested and stuff like that so that was wild um and uh oh but uh it was interesting learning that you know like the xbox series s Mm mm-hmm uh, the Xbox Series S, Nintendo was eating their lunch money. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was taking their lunch money, you know, and stuff like that. Because like up to this point, like no one even no one even was thinking that you know we we figured that Nintendo, like the Switch particularly, is like off on its own little island and stuff like that. So so to hear Microsoft say something around the fact that you know like the the Series S was a competitor for the for the Switch, I was like, what are you? What are you all smoking? Yeah. And the, and it's especially funny when you find out that like the the PS5 is out selling both the Xbox Series S and X units like both both units combined. I was like, that's wild, absolutely yeah. wild. Yeah, mm-hmm. it, there was a lot of good juiciness out of this, but I'm I'm almost to the point of oversaturation of, of just this whole news cycle. I I would love for this to be behind us and. Uh, really and truthfully i think like my most anticipated part is like the fallout i'm ready to because i feel like that fallout bits of like what is going to happen next is more intriguing Mm -hmm. than the actual story is now i'm like i can't wait to see what what microsoft has like in store for in store for like activision and um activision and um what's the other company's name i'm forgetting um um is it or is it Blizzard? Blizzard, yeah, Blizzard, yeah, and 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 king don't forget that because that's part of their mobile strategy yeah and then even more so i'm like i have a feeling playstation has been behind the scenes just talking about like acquisitions of their own but they they've been holding it off due to this ftc trial and i i would love to see what what they're actually going to buy after this deal i'm like is it going to be blue like is it going to be like another studio similar to blue point or is it going to be one of the big dogs like square or something like that because i have a feeling the only reason they haven't you know continue their acquisitions free is because you know the way they were, they were waiting look. for they were yeah. waiting for this yeah I, I know this for sure now now that we now it looks i i never doubted that the, that the, that the acquisition wasn't going to happen i never doubted mm-hmm. that um what i uh given that it looks like it's going to go through and everything now i think now it's going to be harder for Microsoft to make more acquisitions because now they're going to be looked now they're going to be looked at upon you know as as the kid who has his hand in too many cookie jars now and you know like this is going to open up uh, avenues for Sony uh, maybe even avenues for Nintendo even though Nintendo you know like they're 
they're they're they're eastern companies you know they're not mm-hmm. they're not west companies like like microsoft is you know stuff like that but now mm-hmm. but now like it's gonna look like microsoft is too greedy now when they after they get after the whole Act, activision blizzard king is folded up and everything it's gonna look like they're being too greedy because we had Zenimax Bethesda before that, and we had a couple of the smaller studios, you know, like you know, in the years building up. They didn't have much momentum during COVID because I think they were I think they were banking on the fact that the Xbox Series X is gonna put them back on the map, which we kind of saw that's not what's happening. So they, they had this polar shift, dynamic shift to Game Pass, which I will say did not work for them right at the very beginning when they wanted mm-hmm. to make that focus. Um, but now, you know, like things are starting to happen, you know, with Game Pass and ultimately, so we- what, ultimately what I want to see, oh, I, I'll turn the mic over after this. Ultimately, what I want to see is I want to see what they made a lot of promises, you know, in the build up to to getting them to court for the FTC ruling and, and the CMA, of course, and stuff like that. I want to see what they start reneging on, like in the coming years. Yeah, that's because gonna be know, interesting. Because you know, like these ten year agreements, you know they're not gonna play out the way that the way they were put out on paper. You know that. And you know, stuff like that. I guarantee you, like like we mentioned Call of Duty. Like Call of Duty does not look like it's gonna be super solid on Nintendo Switch, you know. Um, of course, you know, because they kind of they, they kind of say, Oh, we're gonna give Sony ten years, and Sony was like, nah, we'll see you in court and stuff like that. They're gonna they're gonna have to hold up that part of the bargain because they came out and said it and it's documented, you know, and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know. So it's gonna be really interesting to see not so much what Microsoft delivers, but what Microsoft backs out on. Yeah, that's gonna well, be very interesting. Well, I, I know for Call of Duty won't be on Switch. I think their deal was just like on Nintendo's consoles, future consoles. So it, it kind of feels like if the acquisition does happen, Nintendo's going to give us a, or act, they're going to give Activision a uh, development kit for the next console, and then they can start developing which, on that next which Nintendo. Be, which, according to the, which, according to the documents, is going to be on par with the PS3 and this and the Xbox uh, Xbox One. So I'm like, that's kind of PS4. Xbox. That, well, oh yeah, I'm sorry, PS4. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, well, that's, that's kind of. That's, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. It's it's the alleged thing from Bobby Kobe because the thing about it is that they haven't even like dived into chips or anything to even get to that point yet. Um, there is a to me possibility if they were trying to get power, power, and they was doing like an Xbox One thing, I could see the power of an Xbox One X that they're going if they and it may cost a little bit more but if they want like power power it'll still be in that generation if they could do uh, about an xbox one x and be able to get it to get it to that point where uh the chips are not that expensive and they can still make money off a sale of their console i think nintendo will go that route um well well, it still sucks though because, like, technically, we're looking at ten-year-old chips, ten-year-old exactly. chipsets, mm-hmm. and, ar- and architecture and stuff like that. You know, you know, like, uh, like, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that this is a bad move for Nintendo, but you know, like, you know, like the major, the major, the major kicker, you know, this console generation is that is that we wish we wish Nintendo's hardware could do more, you know, and and you know, like, hardware is like we're already talking about the refreshes for the Series X and the PS5, you know. So there's hardware refreshes coming, and you're telling me that we're going to have something that's technically two, gen- two uh, a generation and a half behind. You know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. You know, so maybe I, I'm hoping Bobby Kotick was talking out of his ass, but then again, Bobby Kotick, remember this was a this was a guy that we used to listen to a long time ago in the industry. You know, stuff like that. And there's no reason why we should listen to this guy now because like when this when this activist when his when his merger ha- when his acquisition happens, not only is he getting a payday, but he can retire and he can disappear yeah. from the landscape. So you know, like. I don't think that he's talking out of his ass of any of this stuff. I don't think so as well. Well, well it's just because I, I know Nintendo is they're still research research and development right now. They don't actually have anything for their next console just yet. Um, but it, it's kind of weird. I'm like, why would they tell him about a next gen system? I mean, even though he made for another switch, and then well, the um, dev kits are pro- the dev kits are probably already gone out. Yeah, the, I for think the, there was yeah, a 
Yeah, there was a story. Um, there was a story that the Metroid Dread um, team in Spain already had a dev kit that they already had to play with a Switch Pro controller, which lets us know that at least like whatever whatever future kit is also going to work with some mm. of the like uh, some of the controllers from the past. But yeah, that was a big story that came out recently that yeah. um, <laughs> that dev kits are starting to come out for a next gen console Switch. Yeah, and there's also some insider stuff saying that the, that there's a possibility that the that the next Switch console, based off of what they've what they've seen in leaks, was not going to mm-hmm. be backwards compatible with existing Switch games and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So we're probably looking at a whole new architecture, which means like digital might the digital marketplace might be screwed. You know, even I would no, hate they, that. Oh, I would hate even, that so much. But I think you're not the only that- one. <laughs> Right, but even though Nintendo did say, and and that's why I said to, right now it's just all the legend until mm. we get some um, official statements from Nintendo themselves. They said that you know they will try to do something for their online and maybe backup stuff, cloud things, whatever for this generation for their next console. So we don't fully know yet or, or anything like. It may not do an upgrade or something, but it may still have like kind of almost like the DS Lite where um, you had you still was able to play DS games. But like at the bottom, it was the Game Boy Advance games that you could play. So they kind of had like two cartridge slots in a set and in one of I the same systems. I, I don't, don't know if Nintendo, Nintendo is going that route. I don't think Nintendo knows what they're doing just yet. They just want to. They just want to be able to con- continue their partnership with Nvidia. You know, push mm-hmm. the next, push the next, push the next hardware that will have like some version of DLSS in it. You know, stuff like that. But you know, what's also alarming is that Nvidia is mo- is is putting more more major focus on AI and stuff like that. So because I mean, like, look at how look at how they bungled their their graphics card like like you know lineup. You know this 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 generation and stuff like that. It's weird, you know, the 40 the 40 series has had nothing but like hardware people like you know like upset because like Oh, I heard that to, there's been I heard there's starting, been many problems and they were just like you yeah. might as well just go get a 3080 um or yeah, whatever the even, last yeah. shit was. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even like put my put my uh focus on getting a 40 series graphics card. I wound up getting a, getting a 3090 ultimately, you know. Um, and I got 3090, you know, in the middle of the 40 series generation. So that just shows you like, like where my focus is at, you know, um, uh, because price performance and stuff like that, you know, like we've had, we've had a lot of PC games that are, that are ports from like existing console games in this generation mm-hmm. right now that are performing, that, are, that weren't performing well on NVIDIA graphics cards. And it's because the NVIDIA graphics card the expensive ones didn't have enough VRAM like PlayStation, the PlayStation five and the Xbox series X systems are pushing games that need 12, 12 plus gigs of, uh, of, of, uh, of VRAM. And like NVIDIA is putting out cards that, that barely has eight. Well, uh, uh, I could, me and Craig was talking about this, about their next year system. And I know he wants a Zelda horizon look style game, but I'm just like Nintendo's art style. It's, it's different than Microsoft and Sony for what they go for. You know, they the Nintendo games kind of have still had that Japanese kind of look and feel to them in their art style. So unless we're unless they're getting power, that's probably for the performance. But I don't think it's going to be for their art style. Like we're probably going to see a game like a Fire Emblem game that's still going to have that anime look, but just looks beautiful. I mean, if the power is going to be needed, it's going to be between Percy, and this is just my opinion, it's going to be between a Metroid game or a Zelda game because those are telling a different style of narrative and the atmosphere of those games need some detailed artwork towards them. Like, I think it- a, Metroid, a Metroid Prime looking like the Callisto Protocol... Yeah, we'll that will look that. Ins- we'll never we'll see never that. S- we'll never see it, but that would be insane. Or even I, space. True. I think it's a. Uh, I think it's sort of like the snake that that's eating its own tail. Because I think the uh, like a lot of the reason why the art style Nintendo leans towards that art style is because they don't have the power to actually the do hardware. that. The hardware, exactly. yeah, the hardware, and then I uh, and then like. There's also like they're good at doing the very much animated anime cartoon like art styles for those games. So they don't ha- ever feel compelled to actually upgrade. So I think it's like a I think it's like one of those things to where I'm like it is a constant cycle of 
why would we do this? And if we did do this, then we would have to like, then we would be expected to actually like ramp things up. So I, I, you know, it's like one of those things to where I'm like, it's a perpetual cycle, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, like the other competitors, um, PlayStation and Xbox don't have that kind of problem because like, they they can choose to be flexible with it because they have the power then it's just up to them what is our artistic vision nintendo is like we can be we have to be as artistic as possible because that's our mo is not power like that's not our priority yeah so i think it's just just, different philosophies but i'm like next i was telling Corey and he knocked me down about this one i'm like Mm -hmm. just think about it 30 frames per second if they want to get up to 60 they they could but if they could do like 1440p up to 1440p on their next gen console, like think of the games of what Nintendo can do, not what third and indie could do, what Nintendo could do. Because I would be like, how in the heck did y'all do this and make this thing look like that? Like I, I never knew what Nintendo would could do with HD until the Wii U came out, and I'm just like, oh, y'all decided to go that way. Okay, cool. I'm going to be honest you know. with you. If they put out a console and I, and I get it, like I get it there. This is again, this is not their MO, but mm-hmm. I'm going to be slightly disappointed if they've come out with a next gen console. And that thing is just 1440. Like I'm going to be like, that is just shy of 2k. The standard yeah. right now is 4k. So I'm like you shy of half the standard right now. Half which of it. I would be fine. Which I'd be fine because you well, half of well, the games are not fully 4K yet. Still, shit, they're on, barely on they're, they're barely 720. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. On what console? On us uh, on Series X and uh, PlayStation. I'd be like, this is. I don't know this about thing that. Is not like. Because I, no, I can no, listen. Every, I can every listen game bangers out there that are like yeah, gorgeous I mean, I in games. Buy- I mean, yeah, I didn't buy the seventy-five. I didn't buy the seventy-five-inch television to play PS5 games under four K. Like, no, exactly. <laughs> red, look, red <laughs> for red for red for oh, no, no, like no, no, that's on red, that's on that's on Redfall. That's on Redfall and their development team. You know, I, and yeah. I'm just like I, I'm, I'm like, shoot, Halo Infinite don't look look like four K. I mean, there there are some games hey, that have a- that look up to four K, but I'm just like, man, this. This stuff still look like it could be on Xbox One, or this stuff, this stuff still look like it could be on Play, PlayStation Four. Oh, this okay. Stuff oh, down to the, this stuff boils down to development teams and and oh, what yeah, they're willing sure. to mm-hmm. put into it. Yeah, that's that's for that's sure. all it is. That's all it is because like uh because like I believe the tech when it says like hey it can do like the box for PS Five says eight K. Mm-hmm. I believe the tech because guess what? Uh, because guess what? You can actually you can actually go to some YouTube sites and get the AK content. You know, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. It's I believe crazy. That. It is yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it's up to the development houses and stuff like that. You know, and and, and I don't know. And, it seems like it seems like right now all these guys are banking on Unreal Engine five. So you know, mm-hmm. Unreal Engine yeah. five needs to hurry up and start. You know, like putting out. You know, like putting out like the games. You know, and stuff like that. So and, so we can see because like you know like there's a saying like the proof is in the pudding, but the proof of the pudding is in the eating. And and that's why I was just like, just to see what Nintendo could do with 1440p, I think it would drop people's jaws. Like, if people, people would stare okay, at me. Okay. I mean, I'm just the gonna reason- say this. I'm just gonna say this. Four- uh, and this is a, this is a PC gamer. 1440p is impressive, but it ain't that impressive. No, uh-uh. I think like you want, I think, like you want, you want 4K. You want four times, four times the pixel density of 1080p. But I think for- but I think for the thing with Nintendo, because of the art styles, art styles that they choose, it they don't do a lot of realistic or for the realistic things for their games. So that's why I'm doing the 1440p. Like if Nintendo was moving to the more realistic, more photorealistic stuff, then yeah, give me Zelda and Metroid in 4K. Give me like, well, I don't know how Paper Mario would look like in 4K. That would probably be bunkers. But like. If y'all gonna go on a real looking style of uh, F Zero, do it. If I'm gonna get Eternal Darkness remake and y'all gonna make that 4K, I need it dark. Give me that remedy looking style game in 4K. If y'all like, give me the games that they know they need that. But before, but because of most of their games are an art style doesn't need that kind of 4K unless they decide to go that route. Then yeah, then yeah. I'll take 4K. 
And, this and is, I think that's the thing with not with Nintendo's just the way they kind of do their graphics and what they lead yeah. to. Oh, go ahead, Sebastian. This is this is what I talked about earlier. I, there's it's their philosophy and and how they it's kind of like that perpetual cycle. They don't they don't lean towards that mantra. And then like if they did, we would expect it to be like high on an equal playing field to everyone else's graphics. Well, I will say, and I know you mentioned like you didn't see a whole lot, bunch of games that um and you listed out two really bad examples of of games that were well, for the xbox <laughs> by the way I, like hey very much the the games that were taken out into the street and beaten upon release but then like you you do have like your forzas like forza horizon and then photo like forza motorsport mm. is coming out very photo i cannot that, wait i cannot wait for that game yeah we're going to see 4K on that bad boy. Um, and then on the PlayStation side, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, gorgeous game, 4K. The fur in that game is absolutely amazing. It is mm-hmm. a gorgeous looking game. Final Fantasy 16 has some gorgeous moments in that game. It is completely 4K as well. Like you have that one, um, Spider-Man Miles Morales. I know you can also play that on the PS4, but it looks gorgeous on a PS5. Um, absolutely, mm-hmm. especially in 4K. Um, we mentioned um like um the horizon series where you know you talked about Corey mentioned what would zelda look like and and uh with horizons kind of art style or at least like graphics enhancements horizon like horizon forbidden west looks absolutely gorgeous i would make the case that that might be one of the best looking games in the last three years on either and console I, you know and i'm not yeah and i'm not like the horizon uh mm-hmm. forbidden west on ps5 it looks it every trailer that they show that they of that game looks gorgeous and everything and and but that's the art style gorilla like leans to so yes they need that 4k and everything um i i guess it's just with like some of the games that i that i played because i'm like why on my series x that okay it looks it's supposed to be 4k my my tv is set to display 4k but this stuff still looks like a xbox one game or and it may and it may be because that some of the games are developed for xbox one and yeah i got i got it where it do the gives me the upgrade but it's just like man this is not looking anything impressive and i i just do not know why did you um play flights like flight simulator for the series uh, uh, flight simulator is a glory and like I I know you were talking about like you haven't been blown away by anything on the Xbox Series mm. X, but that is like the show that is like the graphical showcase game right now that, mm. that they have for it. Yeah, I think um, when you, you like that's the game like when you invite people over, that's the game you pop on and say like, look how beautiful this console can pro- like the games on this console can produce. But like, I I think that's going to be the standard until Forza, Forza Motorsport comes out. I, I think that's the case. Whereas PlayStation on the PlayStation side of the fence, we do have like a smorgasbord of, of games that's like yeah. the ones I mentioned earlier. And, that, and, that I'm, and, the- and Gears 5 looks gorgeous on Series X. I mean, it, mm-hmm. Gears 5 looked good on Xbox One, but good night, that game looks gorgeous from the beginning on Series X. I'm like, okay, all right, the coalition. Y'all about to clown with the series. Y'all about to clown with Unreal because I know y'all used to work at Epic to make it. So y'all learning the ins and outs. I can't wait to see Hellblade and everything. Um, I'm about to say something really controversial because I told you I have some energy pent up. So I'm I'm about to bring that spice, I promise. I All All right, here we go. So I know you mentioned art style and Nintendo leans heavy on the cartoon like art styles. And that's the reason why they haven't gotten up to 4K. I'm about to give you a 4K game that is leans heavily on Xbox that looks better, better than any game made by nintendo you're probably gonna, the nintendo you're probably gonna give me high five rush aren't you no no i'm not gonna give you high five rush because i it's ori ori and the will of the wisp oh, it looks yes. better than every single game and it that, looked better than mario's to, it looked better than zelda's it looked better than donkey kong but, uh, and, that and, game tried, with, and that game tried it out with native 4k it wasn't a it wasn't a next gen upgrade yeah it wasn't a next gen but update. the thing about but the thing about it is that's not a microsoft game and it's not a Microsoft Who's game. But it's, not Microsoft, it's not a Microsoft game, but Microsoft published it. It must, Microsoft yeah, published it, it. Yeah, that's tr- that's true. But I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Gonna... First of all, first of all, like most of these most of these game consoles, like the strength is the strength is never on their first party. 
It's mm-hmm. on. It's on their. It's on their exclusives from the third party pro, uh, production teams. But Ori in the Black, Ori in the Will of Wisp did come to Switch, so it, it did. Yeah. But uh, it's a it's a dumb diminished down version of it. It ain't in four K. Yeah. They they did they, yeah, they did they did say that it ain't in four K. I, like, I haven't played it. I haven't played it on Switch yet. I need to. Uh, I, I do I own it on Switch. I think I need to get it on Switch. Just on like Xbox, that thing is gorgeous in four K yeah, and running at and running. And running, and they even have it on Xbox where you have it at 112, where you can play 112 FPS. It is an absolute mm-hmm. masterpiece on that console. That's the best way to play it, you know? Yeah, and that and that's and I understand that's fine in our mm-hmm. thing. Uh but I'm just like, shoot, or in the or in the Will of Wisp looks great, but shoot, Metro Dread looks look phenomenal on uh Switch. And that mess with Ori though. Know? It doesn't need to mess with Ori. No, no. but like, I, I was I was just countering. I mean, those, that are, those two, those are two fantastic games. Oh, yeah. Not not trying to argue or anything. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> but at the end, yes, I know you say it's going to be controversial and everything. Yeah, I got but to. I think, but I, but I think when, but like that switch and not compared to what they could produce on their next gen system. And everything, you know, I'm like, of course, we're using Ori. I'm using Ori as a good example, and that's great. But that's just, of course, that's something that Nintendo doesn't dive in or anything because they have particular art styles for different series. Uh, and everything. I get, I like, get it. And, I, was, I was just saying, like, we talked about Nintendo having the crutch of uh, having like. You know, our games are animated. Our games are mm-hmm. anime, you know, kind of style. Yeah. I'm looking at an anime animated game right now that's putting their games to shame, visually speaking. That's all that's that's all I wanted to bring up Ori for. I mean It's in the same category, is it not? I mean it's a platformer, that, it's animated but, style. <laughs> but that's why I just said, like, what she would Metro Dress looks good <laughs> in a sense. Like you know, Metro and, and Dread, I'm not Metro trying to Metro Dread does look good, but I tell you, uh, but you know what? When you play it, when you play it on a on a on a wide on a big screen television, you see its flaws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see, you it, do. Yeah, you see its flaws. You know, it looked like it looked like, like a whole I, bunch of games. Yeah, I was about to say, you play that thing on the TV, it looked like it got smeared in Vaseline. Yeah. Um, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, there. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, yeah, well, there, because like the way it use, the way it employs its shaders, you know, like mm-hmm. there's a mm-hmm. there's a there's a there's a certain look to it, you know, like. And it's only to like people who have like the trained eye, like you know, like the average gamer is not going to see what 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 like the what like pixel peepers will see. Mm-hmm. You know? Is it like that motion the, blur? It, it's it kind. Is, it, it's a little bit of that, but it's also yeah, like motion. some of the the pixels like spread and and like when you so like when you play something on a four K TV where like you mm-hmm. have something that's not being upres to at least like two K or four K and such like that, you see the ten eighty P ness. You, 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 you like yeah like when you uh, especially like metro dread is a gorgeous game i'll give you that but it's gorgeous to me it's gorgeous in a handheld capacity on the tv it just becomes mundane if that yeah. makes sense mm-hmm. you know but and, and i know they was using the old using that game to showcase the old mm-hmm. and everything so why, yeah you can't i don't know why they did that they should have stuck to splatoon for that um, I think they, I, I think they did it just for promotional wise because both the game and the system was coming out on that day, so it was just like, hey, while you're getting, while you're looking forward to the next Metroid game, you, you wanna, you may wanna upgrade your system, uh, to yeah. OLED and, and get. Ha- uh, you know, have you ever seen those videos on YouTube where it shows like Bre- like Breath of the Wild in 4K? Like yeah. where like people are uh, modded it out and play it. You see how gorgeous yeah. that that looks compared to like the way it looks on Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's in 4K. I'm like, what you were proposing earlier where it was um 1440p is not even that quality of what people got oh, like from a game years ago. It, I, it's it's it, it would feel like a disappointment. Is all we're saying. Oh yeah, I, I truly uh-huh. agree, and and that's why on their next gen, like I think if they were going for 4K, that's why I said like Zelda and Metroid needs it because those are more detailed, more atmospheric games and stuff. You're not gonna do 4K for a Paper Mario game. Paper Mario games look good right now, I, and what style they use for it is like 
it's it's good. You don't really need like 4K unless you're gonna have like a whole bunch of enemies, or it's gonna really be a use for that game for a portion of the game and stuff. Like, no, there's gonna be a whole bunch of enemies you don't want 4K. No, for sure not. For sure not. But I think the I think what the, a lot of people want in this generation is choice. Mm-hmm. I mean, Nintendo's yes. not giving us that choice. It would be yeah, different exactly. if like if they had like the the ability to where the dock was if it was like 1080p on handheld and then when you docked it it was 4K. I think that would be the best of both worlds there. But like when you have when you strip people of that choice, it's easier to go to like say a PlayStation and such like that and say like or or an Xbox and say like okay like i can play cuphead on this xbox and i can play Mm -hmm. it in 4k and i can still have all the colors pop or i can still play the same game in 720 and 720p on that switch even though it's a portable device it still looks rough you know like i think it's choice is what we want do you you understand i I think i think where i think where a lot of people get stuck in the weeds at is a Mm -hmm. lot of people don't realize 720p was the introduction to the hd era (laughs) yes Mm -hmm. that was back when that was back when tvs were finally becoming flat screen we didn't have 1080 you know back when tvs first when plasma tvs came out there was no 1080p Mm -hmm. (laughs) well there was there there wasn't even 1080i (laughs) right and 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 i think it's definitely for nintendo this is a first for them of in order of doing like console and doing and handheld together but putting the main parts actually into the switch actually into the tablet like oh, no no um, no, no. Course, I, I oh i give them kudos for it trust me yeah i give them kudos for you know. it. But the problem but the problem is is that N- nintendo used to compete with playstation and xbox mm-hmm. like the yeah. gamecube the gamecube in my opinion was their last strong system as far as like being in a competitive space uh they went the way the, then they went the way of the nintendo wii and something happened you know, I you they know went for uh, the casual kind of market in the series. yeah they did yeah I, I want to bring it back to where um what y'all were talking about a second ago because I think that was a really good point of like when I don't like we're giving kudos to the Switch but I feel like we we have that excuse for the Nintendo Switch because it was the first time they did it like it was the first mm-hmm. time you're integrating handheld True. with actual like a console infrastructure you don't get that excuse for the second go around like oh, on oh. the second go around you Ooh, don't yeah. get that for Ooh, the yeah. Switch Pro, oh like, we Switch trust oh us as Nintendo in the Nintendo community me and Corey talk about it all okay you got you started this off you know how successful this is so you got to bring it on your next console you have all you have learned the the highs and lows you know what we expect now now you got to give us uh, some power you got to put some good chips in it you got to make that stuff reliable that controller like Corey said give him a (laughs) d-pad i I agree with him and and Mm -hmm. like like Nintendo knows they got to bring it to us because as successful as the Switch is, you can't go back to your old ways. You can't you can't do that. You've seen the success. Now you got to evolve it. You got to give us some power. I'm going to take it a step further. I don't think, and I'm not even talking about PlayStation or Xbox. I don't mm-hmm. think you can put out that mess where, oh, it's it's a portable PS4 and Xbox Series and, and, and Xbox One on the go when you already have, uh, like, in the portable space, the ROG ally that's doing amazing mm-hmm. things, that's putting out 4K out Hell there yeah. into the streets Hell when yeah. you play a dot, when you have the Steam Deck, which can go up to the highest PC settings if you want if you so happen to choose to play it that way, you yeah, can't bring think, you can't bring that weak sauce when you already got two competitors this, in the market who are just slapping you down like that. But the thing, of, I, agree. But, and, I agree. But the thing, uh, but the thing about it is, is that yes, we want to give that, but we also got to think about price and how they make money on our console. People forget that about the Nintendo. Yes, I understand. I want everything that everybody else wants, but if Nintendo don't want to lose money on the sale of their console, they're going to cut some stuff. They're going to figure bruh, out... Bruh, this is the most, this is the most affordable uh, PC I've ever, I've ever purchased. And that's oh, RG I didn't ally, know that you it? got one. That's the, that's the ally. Mm-hmm. That's the ally, you know. When did you get it? Um, uh, launch day. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Oh, I got, wow. I got, when, I, got, I got it when I came out a day later, I was on a plane to California. <laughs> Do you see how oh, small wow. it is too? Like it's small. It can it, it, you can play things and it you looks can hook big up. though. No, nah, it, that's small. It's, yeah, it's, compared it's, to like big. The I mean, deck, here's though. here's here's the switch. Here's the switch, and there's the mm. ally. Like that's that's edge to edge. Yeah, you know, so it's big. Mm. Uh, but but it's got it's got it's got form factor compared to the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck is is a chunky boy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a Steam Deck. Uh, like I, I, and you know what? I, 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 I think I made a mistake getting this because I was looking at a Steam Deck. But I think, but and now I'm like, why would I get a Steam Deck? Because you know, like I, I'm not gonna. Oh, there you go. There you go. Like, you see how big it is compared to my head. Yeah, yeah. Turn, yeah, yeah, turn, yeah, turn it on the side for a second so you can see how look, look, look mm-hmm. how thick it is. Yeah, it that's, looks that's, smart. It looks like is that width wise? It looks. Like width wise, like the way that you're holding well, no, it, Sebastian, about, how, it I'm looks about like, how thick it is. <laughs> oh, the thickness. Yeah, yeah. Looking at it, it looks like the uh, that your system is longer um, when it's on the side than a steam deck and everything. Mine? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. Like I need to. I need to actually put my hands on a steam deck. Yeah. Like this thing kind of ruined. This thing kind of ruined me for any other like handheld though. I can tell you that right now. Like I've been having a blast with it. Yeah, but yours tell me is the, cloud-based, right? No, no, it, it can play native. Like both, both the Steam Deck and the ROG Ally can play yeah. native games on yeah, the console. Like you download yeah, and play. No, yeah, there's no, there's no. Oh, it's yeah. a, hard, oh, it's a hard like a SD hard drive kind of thing. Yeah, of SSD. Okay. It's an SSD, it's an SSD, and and it has the micro parts. SD slot. Okay, that's what I was yeah. wondering because I know I thought they said that it was like cloud-based. No, um, no, no, you're thinking of um, you're thinking of um, the Logitech G, Logitech G oh, yeah, Cloud yeah, and the Project, go. yeah, that okay. one. Okay, mm-hmm. Logitech yeah. G Cloud is um cloud based, and then Project Q, which hasn't released on the market, is also cloud based. But these, those two are just are you can download natively, or you can also play cloud like applications. Mm-hmm. So you have the option there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so. it's hard to go back to a switch though. Like legitimately, if you unless like for first party games, it's hard. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And we're not, even, and we're not, even, we're not even talk about that 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 three letter that three letter word that Nintendo can't stand. Mm-mm. What? Mm-mm. Emu. Wow. Yeah. Emu. <laughs> they'll, they'll shut it down. Oh. They'll shut oh, it down M-A-D. like a Karen in the club. They'll shut it down. <laughs> hey. Look, it's there. It's there. Kind of, I can't believe you just said that. I'm about to steal that at work. <laughs> shut it down. I told you I'm hot today, but I'm hot. I'm shut it down like a Karen no, at the club. No, I'm no, like, no, you know no, what? No, I need to steal hold that. On, hold on, hold on. Real, real talk though. Nintendo got salty fast with that leak of uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Oh, they did, boy. They did. Yeah. Salty, like man. It, it, you know, it's like. It's like y'all waited for this. Like, well, this is how we know that Tears of the Kingdom was their was their was their swan song for the for the Switch, because like for them to get this mad when like other games have been have been have been have been um, have been ripped from the card and 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 hosted already. Like, and yeah. I'm talking about bangers. Like, I mean, you know, like, mm-hmm. but Tears of the Kingdom is the one y'all want to call war on. Like, this is how we know. Like, because the game because the game was an out and stuff. So it no nah, no nah, like. The, like I've heard stories about like this how already happening with Pigment Four. You don't hear, but you don't hear them banging like crashing through nobody's house with the FBI or anything about this. Like yeah, they're not big burning. They're not big yeah. for Pigman. Like yeah, Pikmin, they, like they uh uh-uh. they Pigman out here getting mugged in the street and they just started to blot out. But with Zelda happened, they were busting <laughs> through people windows and such. They well, drag, the one, dragged that sixteen year old out of the street <laughs> and took him to jail. <laughs> The the Pikmin one I haven't heard uh, or anything, and I think yeah. it's it, it it's kind of just weird about because I'm like shoot this is Nintendo that's their IP and yeah. you know they're gonna yeah. go who after whoever yeah, they didn't even go it. they didn't even go ham about it on Metroid and, Met- and Metroid Dread was the first Metroid release in what of like a fuck over a decade yeah mm-hmm. they didn't go ham like that you know but, but I think but, it's but because now, the game was the out. But now the community was all up in arms because like folks were like playing on their PCs and you know like pushing it to to the max levels, you know. Mm-hmm. Nah, yeah, man, I'm, I'm telling you, if it ain't Mario, if it ain't Zelda, they ain't out here. They ain't out uh, here yeah, fighting yeah, for yeah, it like it, that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think that well, that, Zelda, no, 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 
No, no, I, no, no. no, I was about to say Met- I was about to say Metro Dread was a weird no. one that they didn't like really go after because I thought they would go after it, but I think it's because the game was out. And put it, like, and put, it mean, like, put it like this: okay. Nintendo was hosting the cookout, like Mar, like Mario and Zelda. Uh, they can get their plates first. Everybody else got to wait until they they sit down. Not even like well, not was, until they put they filled up their plate. They got to well, wait until they Smash, sit down. Shoot, they, 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 and, I mean, with Smash Brothers, and some of them even sitting at the, the, <laughs> the grown folks table. Some of those, I'm some of them probably don't even sit at the grown folks table. It's like right. it makes money. <laughs> Earthbound got to watch over the fence. It's so shit that the game is getting to the cookout. <laughs> uh, oh, oh my this, 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 is a wonderful ep- this is a wonderful episode for me to come back to Power Block on. <laughs> I told you I'm hot today, boy. I'm feeling it. Well, we're gonna move on to the next one. I mean, because you are right, Sebastian. I'm not lying about you're like you're not lying about Earthbound at I'm all. Not gonna even get in. They got watch up with a fit. <laughs> well, we're gonna move on to the next portion, everybody. Uh, it seems that Limited Run Games had a showcase, and they announced about 24 games. Um. They mentioned the Castlevania Events Collection, uh, Chicory, Clock Tower uh, was one. And these are some games coming to Nintendo Switch. El Shaddai, um, Gargoyles Remastered, Gex Trilogy. But the biggest one that really just like got that just like got everybody excited. It was like, wait, what? Umba. Umba. Yes. <laughs> what? I'm, I was just you like, lying. wait a minute. No, no, no. I, oh, oh, you lied. I, I heard about Gex, but you said Tumba coming back? Yep. yep. Tumba like, is getting a, Tumba's getting a physical release through limited run games on Nintendo Switch. And I'm like, wait, what? Hold on. That was a PlayStation 1 exclusive. I thought, it, I literally thought that um, Sony published that game. Hold on, hold on. I must, be, I must be hearing you wrong. You talking about Tumba, the little boy with the pink hair, got long gloss yes, on, be banging his chest. Yes. Be yes. eating, be yes. be um attaching himself it to the pig's butts to, and such like that. That is, pig mm, is coming to PlayStation Four, <laughs> PlayStation Five, and Nintendo Switch, and I think PC. Uh, you wow, um, yeah, limited run. Uh, because um, like, and it's gonna have remastered music, so it's gonna be like new music for the soundtrack. But yeah, Tumba is coming to Switch, and I was like, I was at work, and I'm like. Wait, what? I, I didn't even know Limited Run Games had a showcase. Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, oh, okay, they snap it. The problem that I have with Limited Run is great for all of these games being announced, but they're not going to be out for a year and a half, even after you just paid your whole money. I didn't get Street of Rage 4 to after the digital version came out. Like, I got it like it came when it came out in April. I didn't get the physical version to that following May of this of the next year. I was just like, "This is a mess." Y'all, y'all now are bought by Enforcer, and we're still getting our games late. No, nah, y'all gotta fix this. I mean, I'm gonna pre-order some games, but I'm like, <laughs> like, cause like Tumba, I, I know Tumba and El Shaddai. I have to have because I never got to play El Shaddai. And I'm I'm very interested in playing that. Um yeah, it's uh yeah, they got about like twenty some games coming to Switch and everything. Um the, uh, the, the, karate, the oh. Karateka game. The the Karateka game. Like, is that the actual is that the the remake of Karateka from like the old uh like like old school days? Cause uh, or is or is or are they just bring back the old school game? Cause I I I won't play it if it's if it's that game. I I don't know. I've never heard of it. Oh my god! Uh, you know what? Wait, no, 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 no. You you're about as old as I am. Hold on, you. <laughs> Karateka, on yeah. <laughs> oh. You know, I'm 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 gonna shut up. I'm I'm, I'm not gonna shame anybody today. I'm, I'm not no, gonna, no. Only reason, I, only reason why I never heard of it or anything to run because. Like I remember Karate Champs by Daddy East, and then after Karate Champs, it came Kung Fu. Karate Champs was good I, too, though. Karate Champ was good. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of like, the, like, first like, for, like, like the first game for like the first Street Fighter. Wait, wait, you're thinking of you're thinking of bad dudes. 
No, bad dude's supposed to beat him up, gang. But Karate uh, Champ was the red and white guy. Yes, and yes. One hit. Yeah, it was a simulation. It was, kind it was of a like, simulation game. It was a simulation game. Yeah, so that's when I seen the title of Karate. I'm I've never I've never seen or never heard it. I don't even know what platform that they originally came on. Uh, I can tell you. This is wild. I just can't believe Toomba making a comeback like this. Yeah. All right. So, so and Karateka, Gex. Karateka was a beat 'em up game that was originally released on. Okay. Well, first of all, you want uh, you remember this? Uh, this was the this was the publisher of the game, Broderbund. Remember those guys? Mm-mm. No. This game was this game was originally released on the Commodore sixty four. Uh, I mind. missed that. Yeah, I missed that era. Yeah. And it made and it made its way and it made its ways through to the uh the Atari to the Atari uh the 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 Atari the seventy eight hundred uh the Commodore sixty four it wound up becoming an uh, 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 NES game MS DOS game it was even on Game Boy at one point and then the HD remake hit Windows PS three and three sixty and iOS. Ooh, that's mm. and let's see the good. remake. The, yeah, the remake came out in 2012 and 2013, depending on which platform you got it for. So, Loki, do y'all realize that, like, all it seems like all the PlayStation 1, like, platformers have in some way made a comeback, except for this game called Blasto? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Man. Like, Blasto is the, like, Gex, um, with Gex and um, Toomba making their, their like, comeback. Spyro and Crash Bandicoot got remasters. Like, Rayman is, is still kind of relevant and everything like that. Like, all the major, like, old, old school platformers have somewhat made a comeback, except for Blasto. Blasto out here in the streets looking, and can't get in the cookout either. <laughs> that did, <laughs> didn't Blasto have a famous voice actor for Saturday Night Live um, who died? Uh, um, Phil Hartman, right? Yeah. yeah. Was he in that game? Yeah, Phil Hartman voiced um, Captain Blasto, is what they said. Um, okay. I didn't know this was a first-party Sony game. It said yeah. developers are Sony Interactive. What? I didn't know that. Blasto? But, hold on, I got another thing about the cookout real quick on the Nintendo side. Do you think <laughs> if, like... <laughs> You think Captain Falcon <laughs> from F Zero got invited to the cookout, but he had to sit in the car like he could, he had to eat his food. In the car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, messed up. He eat his food in the car, and Luigi and Luigi show up good, late to the. What were you saying? That's a good Laura? question. That's a that's yeah. a good question because where is a modern F Zero game at right now? <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, it'd be funny I mean, though, like blast, uh, like uh, Captain Falcon eating his like beans and stuff like that in the car and such, and then Luigi pulling up late to the cookout and such like that. He pull up in Mar like a Mario Kart mobile and such like that, park right beside him <laughs> and then go inside. Oh, man. <laughs> Captain Falcon, and, Captain Falcon, and, and and Star Fox both are like mean mugging like Samus because she got a game this this generation. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. I'm sorry to deviate from the the topic of hand. No, I'm no. coming up with this these zingers tonight, life. boy. <laughs> Everybody, folks are going to be laughing, but yeah, that yeah. was um kind of like that. I'm still, I still got to watch it. I ended up falling asleep on it. Um, but I'm like, yeah, Tumba was a big one i'm like wow it, it was just uh-huh. funny it was just weird that i'm like a playstation uh game coming to to nintendo um because i thought sony owned the whole license i didn't know they don't so it was just interesting like i think playstation wants history for games i think i want to revisit because i want to see what 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 did they what studios did they own or pay for exclusives? And does Sony own those IPs or not? It was very interesting. Because uh, Jumping Flash, I wonder, could that make a comeback on Switch? Or Toshinden? Please, Please. Uh, Toshinden, yes. Yes, I, I I would love I would love for Toshinden to return or Bloody Rat uh, Bloody Roar to return. Uh, <laughs> a Bloody War returns. It's just like take all my money and the shoe that I, that's on my foot. Hell, I want um Square Square Enix, Square Enix is all about these these freaking remakes right now. Where's my Einhunder? I don't Where's even my know what that is. I ain't gonna lie. 
no, <gasps> no, 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 lead, lead to ball. No, <laughs> I, hi- oh, I, Hinder, uh, Sebastian, it's Squares Enix first and only, um, uh, shoot, shoot him up, shooter, yeah, shoot him up. Y'all make it right now. No, <laughs> Square mm-hmm. Enix made, it was a, on made a shooter. Mm hmm. I didn't even know uh, that. Uh, something I bu- in the I, style I of our the, type. I, I bumped the soundtrack to that game at least once a week. As a matter of fact, it's playing in my headphones right now while we're on this podcast. You lie. They, <laughs> it, it had a banging soundtrack. Was it better or oh. worse than the 007 soundtrack? It's better. It's Whoa. better. <laughs> it's, it's better. I, I have to agree with LeBron that that soundtrack goes hard. The game is hard, but the soundtrack Yo. goes uh, goes. <laughs> Hard. Yo, yeah. yo, you talking uh, about like, yo, Pink, the Golden Pink, Eye like Pink. soundtrack where you hit pause and they put on their little trap beat for a second? Do, 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 do. Yeah. Did you see the tick? Hey. Did you see the TikTok <laughs> video? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just like, they got the, the boys like, dancing where, to it. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Hold where on, did had to go so hard with this? I'm just like, where had to? Do, where did what it came to do? They knew the assignment. I'm but telling Iron you, Ironheimer Iron soundtrack. I'm about to I'm about to put you up on this right now. I'm about to throw you a link to like my right. favorite track from this from this entire soundtrack. It, and the entire soundtrack is a fuck is a fucking banger. You know, it's part of my language. Put put me on uh, game because like it's hard for me to believe that they got a beat that go harder than the the golden eye like pause menu beat. Cause I'm like that that thing out here like have little kids be, it, be, I, be I wonder yeah, I wonder what's that like the first trap song in a video game now I'm thinking about it I'm thinking like, so <laughs> <laughs> oh all right, all right here's your here's your right. I got you I got you you know I had to right. click on it because no I'm I don't need no that. crystals emergency from YouTube have we heard with this ad no no it's called ad blockers buddy or, or just or just subscribe to uh, YouTube Premium. <laughs> Oh shit! Sure. Right. Have to do all of that. It's got a little tech to it. Yeah, like this is <sighs> when I, I tell sounds, you this, this low key kind of sound like he can be a nineties R and B type of joint for like this right. Is one <laughs> best. This is one of the best soundtracks I've ever heard for a video game, and the fact that it is for a shooter, it go hard. It's mind blowing. It go hard. As a matter of fact, because uh, because that song, that song that you're hearing, for the people who are wondering, like uh, like like, find the 100 soundtrack. Listen to track. Uh, what was it? Track 13, I think it is. It's called the the, the track is called Dawn. You sent um, me Dawn, yeah, yeah. This the go hard, called, but I don't know if it's 007 hard though. You gotta listen to the, you gotta listen to the whole soundtrack. This uh, is just te- this is just a tease. I like, was about to say this is this is good, but I'm like I don't know if it's <laughs> if it's trap beat 007 good. But yeah, <laughs> but no, 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 no. I no, like you are you are on point about that that 007 though. But I feel like to, and I'm a person that I I I listen to video game soundtracks all the time. You know, yeah. like like shoot. So you know, like uh, like I listen to video game soundtracks more. I listen to regular music for the most part sometimes. I feel you on that. And, uh, that Persona I, I, Five I, channel. I soundtrack. got to give it up to <laughs> Sony for for PlayStation One. They had the house and techno soundtracks yeah. on lock. Wipeout. Shoe right up was the banger <laughs> for a house. I thought I'm like, okay, shoot some rich too, but dang, uh, this is a banger. Yeah. Yeah, that had some dope. PS1 ones. has some yeah, PS1 has some good house music. It's it's techno. Uh but we're gonna yeah, get this to our last. Oh, go ahead. Uh no, I was just gonna say, like, like tracks 13, 14, and 15 are all one stage. Like Dawn is the opening of the stage, madness is the mid boss, and conflict is the is the is the second part of the stage. That whole that whole three song run is freaking incredible ah uh, yes well we're gonna get into our third and final story uh for the japanese t- uh charts zelda tears of the kingdom and final fantasy 16 battle for supremacy um it's time to check out the japanese charts once again and i suspect that the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom and final fantasy 16 are pretty much neck and neck um, after Master Detector Archives, Ranko dropped down to fourth place. Um, that game just released a couple a little while back. Um, I'm getting my collector's edition for, uh Friday. Uh, so I'll be able to speak on it more next time on Power Block, everybody. Um, Tears of the Kingdom is still being out the competition and is slowly but surely inching towards that two million unit milestone. Whether it will reach it at, at its current rate remains to be seen. But goodness, what a feat. Elsewhere, it's Switch City over in Japan with all the usual suspects making their appearance, including Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Nintendo Switch Sports, and Splatoon 3. 
Uh, what a great time to be a Nintendo gamer, right? Um, so The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Um, so 17,996 copies. Final Fantasy 16 came in two at 14,109 copies. Um, Mario Kart 8, 9,736. Master Detective, 9,566. Um, Minecraft, uh, 6,935. Uh, Switch Sports, 6,247. Splatoon 3, 5,550. Smash Bros. Ultimate, 4,979. Ring Fit Adventure, 4,727. And everybody wants to switch at 4,494 with a total copies of 7,814 copies. Um, and that I was think, number 10. I think the crazy thing is how many people got bamboozled and been buying one to switch. Like, yeah. they got yeah. fleeced. Absolutely fleeced. I'm actually and surprised. I, it's, I'm actually surprised it's still in the top 10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, everybody just everybody wants to switch. It was just like, wait, the game came out. Like, no one around here brought it. Like, no one's talking mm-hmm. about it. And I was just like, oh, it was a game that came out. That okay, I, it's a game I didn't pre-order. I didn't buy one to switch. So I guess people who do own it, hopefully they having fun. But um, I'm happy to see that uh, at least Final Fantasy getting up there it is well deserved of the sales and stuff. And hey, it's is runner up for a good game of the year nomination. So I, I like I think it's gonna be up there with a lot of nominations. I think for PlayStation 5 owners, it might win game of the year for them, depending on Spider-Man. Uh Spider-Man 2. I'm gonna we gotta see how that does. But like Final Fantasy 16 is well deserved. Um I still need to get my PS5 in the game so I can play it. Um, and I do want to hear the soundtrack. Everybody said the music in Final Fantasy 16 is good. It's, it's, it's so good. So good. Mm-hmm. Laurent, what's your game of the year so far? My game of the year so far is Dead Space. Dead Space okay. remake. I feel you. I yeah. feel you. Ed's over here on Tears of the Kingdom, my bad. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. I, and Laurent, I finally got my Dead Space for uh, Series X. So um, I didn't get it when it came out because of uh, Fire Emblem Engage. Uh, but I'm so excited to play Dead Space with the remake. Uh, it looks yeah. really, really good. Yeah, I haven't I'm had a chance to play Final Fantasy 16 yet. My roommate, my roommate has it, which is why, I like, using my PlayStation Five is like right back here, over, like right behind my shoulder. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, but my roommate bought Final Fantasy 16, so uh, so the PlayStation is downstairs right now in the living room, um, and he's playing it. And I peeped in on him, and man, it's gorgeous and stuff like that. The only reason why I haven't been enthusiastic about playing it yet is because, like, as much as I want to play it, I kind of want to wait for the PC version. Yeah, what is the deal with Final Fantasy 16? Because they were just like, it's a six month or it's a exclusive, time exclusive, and then they don't know what comes in after it. Like, is it hidden PC only or in Xbox? Like, just, like yeah. what is the it'll deal? It'll probably be just like seven, like Final Fantasy Seven remake. It'll probably, for sure. it'll probably just. Just show its face on PC and they'll keep they'll keep mm. rolling. Yeah, yeah. I doubt it'll come to Xbox as well. But yeah, the pro- I don't I think the they're waiting is, for the merger there for that. Yeah, the problem is the problem is like, you know, like um like Xbox just made an enemy out of Square Enix somehow. Honestly, that's that's the only thing I can think of. Because I, I mean, I you know, wanted- like, they're not even they're not even getting their they're not even getting their B class games. Like they're not even getting for spoken, you know. Um, right. They got Stranger. They got Stranger in Paradise, which is wild because that game is. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think. I think. It's, I think Xbox made the right move, though. They kind of um out of the you know some of the you know Japanese developers. They they went and got um Atlas to heavily partner with them, and I think that was yeah. really smart, though. Yeah, because I'm like, if you have, personally speaking, I know Square Enix pumps out games like nobody's business. I haven't seen anyone pump out as many games as Square Enix has in the last year and a half, like. I don't. I I don't even know if those workers get to sleep anymore. But like, yeah, Square uh, Square Enix is acting like they need to compete with Capcom. Like I'm telling you. <laughs> but I'm I think and, and I think the thing with Square Enix for them outside of their big games, like you mentioned, the round like they B tier games and stuff. They got a lot of it on probably on Switch and maybe PlayStation, like those smaller, like even the two D sprite looking games and stuff yeah. in the collections. I they just have a lot on Switch. 
um, some exclusive, like time exclusive, and then bringing it to everything else. Like that's how I kind of been seeing Square Enix compared to their bigger games, like Final Fantasy 15 and 16 and Forspoken and stuff. Yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting to see what um what happens going forward. But I think um, you know, I think Xbox made a smart move by just partnering with Atlas because they, you know, like those the those are fan bases, especially so if you've been a games? long oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if you have like been a long time Xbox fan like fan. Those are games that are also meaty that are also have like an install base and a word of mouth that like a lot of Xbox gamers have been salivating to get to try those those games. So mm-hmm. I think that was a really smart move by them. Yeah, really I'm smart. shocked that the Yakuza is, yeah, I'm shocked that the it feels like the Yakuza series is even moving some more to Xbox than PlayStation. It's very weird. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good partnership as well. So I think like they're making a lot of inroads with um Japanese developers. It's just you know, I I fully believe that Square Enix is going to be like as soon as the FTC Microsoft case goes down, I can easily see we get an announcement within the next six months of like PlayStation acquire Square Enix. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why, like, we haven't seen a lot of the a lot of the mainline Final Fantasy games come to Xbox. Oh, I swear Nintendo will probably be in some big trouble if if Sony if if Sony takes Square and Microsoft takes Sega, it's gonna be like man. Um so I think Sega, Sega already said Sega already said like there is there is no there is no possibility of that happening anytime no, soon. No, no. I think Capcom Sega, would get Sega acquired just before Sega. Back. Yeah. I think Capcom would get acquired before Sega does though. And and that Capcom's on and Capcom's too much on too much of a roll right now. Shit, they, yeah, all they yeah. do is make a brand. All they do is make a brand new uh, Monster Hunter game, and they're they're gonna sell. Yeah, Monster Hunter World yeah. Two is gonna sell Game Busters. I, I know. Um, well, actually, me and Corey was talking about this yesterday. Uh, for a future expansion pass, but we think that if anything happens with Crystal Dynamics, we think that Microsoft might buy them, might buy Crystal Dynamics, It'd or if they could move. buy them. Yeah. Yeah, because they're um Crystal Diamond Di- I was we were talking about if the initiative initiative was still working on Perfect Dark, but it, he said it kind of feels like that whole team at Crystal Dynamics is not working on it. So I would be totally shocked if the uh Crystal Dynamics version of Perfect Dark comes out on Xbox. And I gotta admit that Crystal Dynamics and and Microsoft they they got it. They had a good one with uh, Rise of Tomb Raider and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Like, I, I'm not gonna knock them. They really did. I think they have a good business and they kind of fit together for it. You know. Yeah. And I'm gonna tell you who it's like the, okay. it's like a Xbox like perfect Xbox acquisition. I think it's IO Interactive, the team that made the Hitman games. Yeah, like that's I another think that's one. a match made in heaven for them. Yeah, because I went, I went. They're independent now. They're indie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, they, but they like they had a, a very close um, relationship with um, what was it, um, um, like Square and all that kind of stuff too. Yeah, so, um, like it is, it, you know, I think that that is a, more of a Western developer, Western developed studio that I could see like Microsoft salivating for, and in especially with them like currently making that James Bond game that. I don't I'm gonna be honest with you. I and this is another one of those like fire hot takes. I don't think Indiana Jones is gonna be worth a damn. Like I I think Indiana Jones might be a solid seven or eight out of ten. And if it's a seven out of eight or ten, like I don't think Indiana Jones is an IP people care about like nowadays. Like like the vast majority of gamers I, I think are not gonna lose their minds over an Indiana Jones game in twenty twenty three. Like oh, Corey, we- can we Corey will I mean that's what's the vast majority vast majority is why I'm why I'm saying that because like I don't think Indiana Jones is an IP that is strong enough to where like especially nowadays to where like it's going to hang with like other strong IPs out there I can I can Mm. clearly see us living in a world where that Ubisoft avatar like Far Cry copy game that's coming out later this year is going to do better sales wise than this Indiana Jones game. I wonder if we get next year any kind of um like view of what they've been working on 
you know, like a trailer or something. Um, Even if it's just like like Uncharted, like, I don't think, I don't think people are going to care like that. Like, there's a whole generation, like, of kids who don't know who Indiana Jones is and don't care. Yeah, I, there's a whole, like, generation of teenagers and young adults that don't have that connection with that IP. And it's so funny. Uh, I don't know if you've been having this conversation, Laron, but Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, that's a that's just been coming up. You know, that movie alone's been coming up that people just been talking about. Like it's yeah, because, one of the yeah, movies because, that people Oh go ahead. Yeah, it's because it's because short round was is the husband in everything everywhere all at once. Yeah. But it was just like it was weird, you know, with the new movie being out or you know the current movie being out that tip of doom just came out and it created a big discussion about indiana jones and it it was just it was so weird to be like y'all speaking about this movie (laughs) it it, it was just weird on how it came out um yeah but you guys that's gonna be it for nintendo power block we kind of answered dogmo in the first section (laughs) 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 and everything so um but before we go sebastian you want to go ahead and plug where people can find you everybody if you liked my antics for for this show you can find me at the single player experience podcast that's where normally the the cookout is for the single player gamers to find out about the good single player games that they want to play if you like um like what I do like in this episode definitely go check out check me out there you can find it on all your favorite podcast platforms and on youtube.com you you can also see your boy Ed on the show on occasion we and him have a blast just talking and kicking it together uh, so yeah you can find me there all right and Leron, where can people find you if you want to um, be found at- <clears throat> You know, it's been a while since I did this because uh, because technically I just tell people to check the show notes uh, now nowadays. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna if you wanna get in contact with me, stay in contact with me, uh, spy on me, see what I'm doing, like slide in the DMs or anything. Like all my social media plugs is uh, Exodus eight zero three E X O D U S eight zero three. Um, and uh, of course, there's the Crossroads podcast, which uh, which me it's it's now shifted to a two man show. Like it's gone, it's me and my boy Andre. We're we're doing it now. Uh, it's getting a little bit of a revamp, but we're going to be starting and record new episodes real soon here but you can check it out by just uh hitting up uh the, the uh, crossroads podcast or just going to my youtube site which is youtube.com slash exodus 803 and checking out uh, a lot of our recap episodes that are on there um but yeah uh, that's yeah so you can find me I, I, I miss you guys i'm just like what happened to crossroads it's thursday <laughs> i'm waiting for a new Where? episode and Yasha's yeah, been we're, dead, huh? <laughs> it's like we're wait, we're, we're, re- we're restructuring and we're and we're trying to and we're trying to figure some things out because uh because because like when Crossroads started, we were like a four slash five man like group and you know and as and as and as things happen, we we, we done it down to three people and now um and now it's just me and Andre, you know, which is not nobody's been excommunicated nothing like that. Just uh just you know like life happens and people have like new priorities and stuff and you know like so. The show still goes on, so there there's going to be a Crossroads uh, podcast volume two like that it gets started up real soon. Uh, the, the next, the new season. I should say. I, every time we revamp shows, I don't know if you do this to Sebastian. I mm-hmm. like to call them seasons. Be like, we're in a new season. Like this is the <laughs> summer, summer season. This is the fall season and everything. And I feel like when, like even when Corey put it on new. Uh, like intros and you know how our pictures is looking stuff. I'd be like, okay, so we're in our new season and everything. We're in our like new voyage and everything. And I think that's cool. And, and th- oh, that's that. a neat thing. So, so you <laughs> then, you picture as a new season as opposed to a glow up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because because the thing with Corey is is that he be like he'll like it. We'll do it for three or four months, and then he'll change it on me. Be like, you know what? It's time to uh, update. I'm like, wait a minute. Can, can we can we discuss this first <laughs> and everything? But yeah. But everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next time on Nintendo Pop Block. Bye, everybody. Peace out. If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, Patreon.com/slash/BossRushMedia, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. 
Natita Poblock is a product of Boss Rush Media, LLC, and is recorded from our headquarters in Akron, Ohio. The show is hosted by me, Edward Varnell. My co-hosts are Corey Derrick and Cordy Yikes. You can find Corey at I am Corey in HD on Twitter and Instagram, as well as hosting the Boss Rush Podcast and Tower Casuals, the Destiny Podcast. You can find Cordy at Cordy underscore Yikes on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. You can find me at that Richard Cole on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Nintendo Power Block on all social media platforms at Power Block Podcast. You can also follow Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network on all major social media platforms. Join the Boss Rush Network, Discord, and Facebook groups to interact with other friends and fans. Visit BossRush.net for more great content and Patreon.com slash BossRushMedia to learn how you can support this show. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.